February 17, 1923, a momentous day in the history of archaeology. That's when Howard Carter opened up the tomb of Tutankhamun, the boy king who had died at age 18. Inside, an array of wonderful findings, a gilded throne, and a sarcophagus. In fact, a nest of sarcophagi, and the innermost was the mummy of King Tut. Together with bows and arrows, a supply of food, and clean undergarments. Why? Because you wouldn't want to go to the other world in dirty underwear. And the Egyptians thought that the soul would leave the body and go to the other world. But in order for that to happen, the purity of the heart would have to be judged by Osiris, the god of the underworld. And if it was judged to be pure, then the soul would go on. If not, the heart would be fed to Amit, another god, and that god would devour the heart, never to be brought back to life again. Well, being brought back to life was not the way that most people imagined. I mean, the Egyptians did not think that the mummy would arise. That notion came from uh, cinematographers in the 20th century. They're the ones who invented the mummy coming back to life and haunting people. The Egyptians thought that the body would stay where it was, but it was sort of a deposit for the soul, and the soul would periodically have to go back to the body in order to get some sort of nourishment, refurbishment. And that refurbishment would come from the heart. So the heart would be put back into the mummified body. The brain, on the other hand, the Egyptians didn't think much of it. It was taken out with special tools through the nose and thrown away. But the heart went back into the body for judgment. Along with the heart, there were a number of other objects that were put in with the mummy. Scarabs. Scarabs were replicas of what we would call dung beetles. The Egyptians worshipped dung beetles. Why? Because these little creatures would roll dung up into a ball and roll it across the ground, just like the Egyptians thought that the god Kepri rolled the sun across the sky, and that's how a day came to be. Well, they worshipped the dung beetle, and it was looked on as an amulet. It would be made of ivory or carved from stone and placed around the house or put into the uh, sarcophagus in order to protect the body and in order to make sure that the soul would be happy in the afterworld. It was a remarkable process, mummification, and the body would often be covered with a face mask. And of course, the most famous one is the golden one that adorned the face of King Tutankhamen. And this was so that the soul would recognize the body from which it came. And it's a remarkable story. The ancient Egyptians were so adept at working with gold. It was absolute work of art. Anyone who's ever seen this live was totally amazed by it. But there was something else about the tomb of King Tut. It was supposed to harbor a curse. And anyone who was involved in the opening supposedly died in some unusual fashion. And this curse has been talked about in stories, but when you look at the scientific evidence, it turns out that of the 58 people who were there when the tomb was opened, uh, only about 10 died within the next 10 to 15 years, none of them in any kind of an unusual fashion. But of course, it makes for a good story. However, there was no Pharaoh's curse. But what there is, is a remarkable story of what ancient Egypt believed in and the kind of things that they were able to do. And the golden mask of Tutankhamun is one of the most remarkable artifacts in the history of the world.